Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about The Maniac by Benjamin Labatut. Although I think it could be Ben Yarmin or something like that, but I'm not too sure, so I'm just going to call him Ben. Now this novel's had a little bit of hype. It's popped up in a few best of 2023 lists, and with the release of Oppenheimer this year, and I recently re-watched Oppenheimer, and my god that film is absolutely fantastic, this book felt like it was going to be a great little companion piece. I've also heard very good things about Labatut's International Booker Prize nominated novel When We Cease to Understand the World, so yeah, I was quite hyped to get into this one. So what's it about? The Maniac places John von Neumann at the centre of a literary triptych. Von Neumann was an American-Hungarian mathematician, physicist, computer scientist and polymath, paving the way for many of the technological advancements we enjoy today. We begin the novel with Paul Ehrenfest. Ehrenfest was an Austrian physicist and good friends with Einstein. He fell into despair when he saw science and technology become tyrannical forces. His depression and fear led him to kill his son and then kill himself. The second and longest section of the book is based around von Neumann. It's told from many different perspectives, many outside eyes that have encountered von Neumann across his career, people who taught him, people he worked with, and people he had romantic relationships with. Also, a vast amount of this section takes place at Los Alamos, where the atomic bomb was built, and a lot of the physicists, the scientists involved in building the atomic bomb pop up in von Neumann's section. Again, if you have watched Oppenheimer recently, then this section of the book is going to be a nice little companion piece to that film. The third section takes place around 100 years from where we started. In this section we have a showdown between the South Korean Go master Lee Sedol and the AI program called AlphaGo. This encounter embodies the central question of Van Neumann's research and his most ambitious project he ever worked on. A project around the creation of a self-reproducing machine. An intelligence able to evolve beyond human understanding and control. And just in case you don't know, the game Go is an abstract strategy game. It's a game for two players in which the aim is to surround more territory than your opponent using these tiny little black and white stones. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked. The writing is solid and I really enjoyed the piecing together of Van Neumann's life through so many different perspectives. It gave us such a diverse and rich look at him as a person and his achievements. Lapita is really good at breaking down the complexities of physics and maths without it ever becoming too overwhelming for the reader. And I really enjoyed jumping into the mindset of all the great scientific minds of the 20th century. The triptych structure works really, really well once you've finished and you look at the individual pieces and how they connect the idea of the evolution of science in all its amazing but also terrifying ways. Yeah, it's not until you finish that you kind of, you start looking at it as the greater whole and you realise the kind of impact of science, of technology and where we're heading. But it's not just the evolution of science, it's also how we philosophically look at AI and its impact and the future of where we're heading with it. And also, kind of how little has changed. And in a book like this, in which the three sections are loosely connected, and then once you finish and you really start thinking about it, you realise how large those connections really are. And also when you look at Van Neumann's section, uh, all the different perspectives, so many perspectives telling his story, it's easy for you to kind of latch on or prefer some over others. But I would say what I liked is actually, I think there was only about three or four sort of perspectives that I kind of really didn't get on with that much. Overall, all the different sections and the three different main sections, yeah, I enjoyed all of them. What didn't I like? I didn't really have much connection to character. Whilst reading this book, it felt like a book of facts and it was leaning more heavily into the facts and quite light on the fiction as opposed to really exploring the depth of character and the connection to character we could have from the fiction it was adding. As I've mentioned, I enjoyed most of the sections and the perspectives in this novel. However, most of those sections, which are really well written, are really building and adding towards the story, as opposed to giving me a moment to really deeply connect to character. I wasn't emotionally connected to a single page of this novel, which is a massive shame because you would hope within a kind of historical fiction sort of novel, a novel like this that is, is doing a lot of work in getting the facts right and the people right and things like that, that it would be able to find time to use the fiction to make that emotional connection. But it just wasn't there. Well, well it wasn't there for me. So at times it did make me feel like I was reading a non-fiction book. My next dislike is if you have seen the movie Oppenheimer and the AlphaGo documentary on YouTube, I really don't feel like those sections of this book are treading new ground. In fact, I'd say you get way more from the AlphaGo documentary than you do from that section in the book. And of course, this book would have to be massive if it was to go into as much detail as Oppenheimer the movie does or the AlphaGo documentary does. But still, I was hoping within the fiction 
of those sections, it would add something to it. It would bring something new to it. And it really doesn't. It just sort of covers the facts and not in a way that's better than those other two sources. So I don't know. I was just left a bit going. I kind of knew all this. And because the fiction isn't connecting me to character, I don't. I didn't. I just it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't giving me anything. It wasn't doing anything for me. I think the power of this book is based on how much knowledge you have of the source material or the historical facts that it is being built upon. At times I was learning a lot from this novel and the fictional aspects were adding something to it, especially as far as kind of the build of the story is concerned. But for those sections I already had a bit of knowledge on, yeah, it just didn't really bring anything new to the table for me. So I actually think this is the kind of novel which works so much better if you know absolutely nothing about the source material, the people, the facts, the history whatsoever. Overall, this book was good, but nothing more than that for me. I don't regret reading it. I really enjoyed reading it, and I think a lot of people will really enjoy reading it. But overall, it just didn't do too much for me, so I'm going to give it three stars out of five. I have been wondering why it has been popping up on so many best of 2023 lists, and maybe there is something in the novel that I'm just missing. Maybe there is something in the fictional aspects of these stories being told that's really adding something that I just don't have the knowledge, or I just, I'm not understanding. But for me... Yeah, I just, I don't get it. I don't know why it's popping up on so many lists. But as said, I do think it is a good novel and I do think a lot of people will really enjoy it. I can't believe I've gone through the entirety of this review and haven't actually told you why this book is called The Maniac. The Maniac was built at Los Alamos or started being conceived at Los Alamos by the ideas of von Neumann. And yeah, and they called it The Maniac. So it was like the sort of first computer system of its kind. Anywho, have you read this novel? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have read it, please let me know. Do you think it deserves its place on so many best of 2023 lists? As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying whatever you might be reading. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.